Dr. Courtney, maybe you can join us now and, you know, tell us about your outlook on this and, you know, what the, the really the big the debate is within the medical community here, um, you know, in terms of whether this is something that is safe for children or not, whether it's something that's effective for children or not. Um, well, I was quite a skeptic uh, five or six years ago. I refused to approve of it for a fellow physician. Currently, my youngest patient is eight months old, um, had a very massive, uh, centrally located, inoperable brain tumor. And the father's, it's the father's strength to uh, push ahead and uh, get approval from someone and to begin treatment. And the father was successfully able to avoid chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. And within a couple of months, had reduced the tumor by 10%. In four months, had reduced it uh, essentially to zero. And this child, because of that, is not going to have the long-term side effects that would come from very high-dose uh, chemotherapy or radiation. By the way, I, I want to pull up to uh, an image that you sent along to us uh, to show our, our viewers of the difference of, of the brain tumor and what it was that happened there after a couple weeks. Can you explain that for us in more detail? Yes, that uh, large white center area is the tumor. Um, and they were putting uh, cannabinoid oils on the baby's pacifier twice a day, uh, increasing the dose, and it was a 3.8% CBD, so it was a high CBD tincture or oil. And within two months, there was a dramatic reduction, enough that the pediatric oncologist uh, allowed uh, them to go ahead with not pursuing traditional therapy. And within four months, you can see that uh, the tumor is essentially gone. And then by eight months, the normal architecture had resumed. And at this point, the risk of the MRI is so high that they don't, uh, they really don't want to do any more MRIs because of the risk of, of the analysis. So currently the child's being called a miracle baby. Um, and I would have to agree that this is the type of response that we should be insisting is frontline therapy for all children uh, before they launch off on medications that have horrific long-term side effects. Do you feel that there are some ethical questions, you know, to be raised here, though? And, you know, we, are, we spoke about it for a moment that you're not giving, uh, you know, these children marijuana to smoke. It can be administered in other ways, if you're using cannabis oil. But what about the possibility of maybe, you know, psychoactive effects? How does that perhaps affect a child, affect their development? Uh, there's a lot of information out there that has been built up with the intent of uh, con causing confusion. Um, it's, it's quite clear that many of the uses, and particularly the optimal, which is, I'm very interested in raw cannabis, which is non-psychoactive, that the lack of psychoactivity allows those to be very quickly uh, raised to maybe 600 to 1,000 milligrams a day, depending on, on the individual size, whereas a psychoactive dose is restricted to about 10 milligrams. So the non-psychoactive use of the plant really facilitates a lot of its benefits. Um, because it allows elevated dosing. Jason, I'd love to be.